This is the Digital Music Trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014, an interview with the nerdcore superstar Adam Warrock. DMT's coverage of South by Southwest is brought to you by Omniphone, the leading B2B cloud music provider powering global music services including Sony Music Unlimited, Guvera, Rara and Sirius XM. Find out more on Omniphone.com and by Music Graph, the world's first knowledge engine for music, available as a consumer app and as a graph API for developers. Check out MusicGraph.com or Developer.MusicGraph.com. Hello everyone and welcome to Digital Music Trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014 and it's a real pleasure to be here with Adam Warrock. So hi Adam, thanks for joining me, how's it yeah, going? It's going okay, I just <laughs> I just got in today and uh, it's already kind of crazy so I'm just happy to have a parking space yeah. be in the center and talking to you. So thank yeah. you so much for having me on. It's awesome and it's actually the first interview that we managed to do outside. Finally yeah. the weather is turned in Austin so yes, we, we are in the heat which is amazing. I uh, didn't want to find, I felt like I dragged my London weather with me so I wasn't too happy about that and so Adam is a fantastic artist he he uh, works in a genre called uh, a nerd Nerdcore. Nerdcore, yeah. right? Yeah, cool. So the, this is, uh, it's, you know, I came across uh, you uh, through a Guardian piece that was published in the UK uh, last November, I think, uh, yeah. uh, uh, timed with the release of your new album. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you've been uh, creating some interesting output for the past, you know, three and a half, four years. So I want to talk uh, about that and how you started out. So wh when, you, when you decide to start, uh, you know, your Adam Warrock project and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, why? I originally was kind of just making music for my friends. Um, they did a lot of things like podcasts and web comics, and they were had blogs. And I would make kind of like these jokey theme songs for them. And because uh, I used to make kind of like indie hip hop back when I was right. in college, and then I stopped for a while. And I went to grad school and I started working, and I started making music again just to kind of have fun with these subjects. And uh, I needed a website to post them on, and so I made this website. Uh, AdamWarrock.com and I just started posting free music and originally it was just kind of a place that I posted any song that I made right. and then I started kind of branching out and making songs about comics and TV shows and video games or whatever breakfast yeah. or whatever I felt like and it kind of became this thing where I would post um, free music multiple times a week and then a couple songs kind of caught fire and then it kind of kept going from there and I started making albums and now it's still kind of this weird thing where I, I tour and I sell CDs and I have albums but I also have this website where right now I think there's over like 500 free songs on it Wow. that's been collected for the past four to five years and uh, it's kind of like a dual headed monster that yeah. I kind of have musically so yeah sure and so um, how did you start developing your audience so was it all about the website when you started did you have a lot of traffic on YouTube or what, 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 what do you focus on? I mean, originally I didn't even have a YouTube channel yeah. and uh, it was honestly, it was mostly through Facebook and Twitter uh, it was before Tumblr was really as big as it is now. And I just happened to have some friends who were bloggers and they were journalists or they were just yeah. people who made web comics that had pretty big online followings and um, they would tweet about it and it would kind of catch fire and slowly I would kind of get more followers following what I was doing to the point now where it's like, I, it's, it's funny because now when I release something, I think a lot of people are almost trying to predict the next thing that I'm going to make, which TV show or what's like interesting in pop, pop culture. Yeah. And so uh, it's kind of grown to this thing where like now it's not so much about getting the word out there. It's about satisfying this base of people that are already there. Yeah. Um, but originally it was all it was all social media. I would say, honestly, I knew some people that were big influencers on social media and they helped me out and it just kind of snowballed from there. So. Sure, and so this project's always come together in, in, as part of a community. So what is the community like around, around what you're doing? Uh, there's multiple communities and the, the first one is there's like this nerd kind of music community. Um, a lot of it's online and a lot of us actually don't, we didn't really know each other when we started. We didn't yeah. even know this community existed. <laughs> and it's ironic because tonight we're actually doing a showcase at Flamingo Can Cantina which uh, has been going on for a while. It's like this nerd rap showcase. It's kind of the best of the best of people who make this. And we all have become friends and a lot of us actually met for the first time here at South By. Wow. Because we all live in every corner of the country. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a very synergistic showcase because we're one of the few communities of music who like, we're all friends with each other. Yeah. And we hang out with each other and we talk to each other pretty co constantly and we guest on each other's stuff. So there's that and then there's like kind of like this online web comics community that I was tapped into very early on and that is you know just a huge sea of people that I keep up with on Twitter and on Tumblr and things like that yeah and when I go to comic cons or I go to events or like geek events things like that I kind of have a lot of friends immediately that I know that are there 
and it's been this nice kind of synergistic thing where sometimes I can give them some publicity for books that they do or yeah. websites that they run and they talk about the songs that I make and it's just very it's a very supportive community and I think because they're all geeks and nerds they understand that you have to support things with money yeah. and uh, show up or else you'll have your favorite TV show canceled or you have your yeah. favorite comic book discontinued and so they kind of have this awareness of like supporting and doing it very vocally and that's very, great. very plainly. And so that's essentially how we managed to, to, to uh, go full time on this, right? Yeah, yeah. it's been, uh, I think in June it'll be four years of full time music. Wow. And uh, it's been very weird <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of traveling. I kind of I kind of have become very comfortable living on the road. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's it's been amazing. I never, when I started doing the website, I never thought in a million years that it would lead to this. And it was kind of a point where I was still working and I kind of had this opportunity to maybe possibly do this full time. And I, yeah. I was just like, well, I got to try this out, you know, because if it's the only thing that's keeping me from doing it is that I would make less money, that's kind of a stupid reason to do it yeah, or not sure. to do it. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so uh, is it all about live? Do you also say, uh, you know, uh, how are your music sales going in terms of the, the comparison between the two? Is it music is coming out there essentially for free to s yeah. to promote the live shows? It's or weird. <laughs> It's this weird thing where like when you release an album, you get like this big influx of sales for like a very right. limited period of time and you only expect a certain amount of things to sell. And that kind of dies off online. So you have to kind of know how to space out what you want to sell and how often you want to ask your audience to buy that. And then on the other side of it is you go to events, you go to cons, you go to concerts. And a lot of times you'll have CDs and the people who come out are people that listen to a lot of the stuff on the website for free. Right. And they honestly just want to thank you and they want to meet you and shake your hand. And yeah. a lot of times they will buy just like a CD to kind of say thank you. And it's this idea of support. And then once a year, I do a donation drive on in June for about a week, where I make this like rewards package, and I say yeah. if you want to donate anywhere from a dollar to whatever, uh, you'll get this rewards package. And usually every year, that's about how I make like a third to a half of the revenue that the website generates because people wow. have been following it for that whole year and yeah. getting a hundred plus free songs and a lot of stuff has been happening. And so I ask them once a year to say, you know, if you want to throw some in, you you also get all this exclusive stuff. Yeah. And uh, that kind of, those combination of those three things kind of make it a weird, unexpected line graph of yeah. things of revenue coming in. But for the most part, uh, you know, you look at it as a whole, um, it's, it's fairly steady if you can remain active and just keep working hard. And yeah. I think a lot of musicians who work online, it's really easy to kind of fall into this mindset of like, I'm a musician, I only do one album every couple of years and I tour once a year and it's not really like that anymore when you run a website. You have to constantly be pushing out content. Yeah. A lot of it has to be free. A lot of it has to be to get exposure and make people notice. And so you have to constantly be on your toes and working. Absolutely. And you cover a bunch of different subjects. You know, you're not limited to just, you know, the, the neuro subjects. You also cover topical uh, yeah. things. And, then, and so uh, how do you decide what, what's, what, what to cover? Is it just what strikes a fancy? Do, do you have, a, you know, a specific uh, places you look at? I, I, I have a brain trust of really good friends yeah. who I realize almost like third person wise I'm talking about one thing too much to them yeah and they kind of want me to shut up about it <laughs> so I said okay I'm gonna make a song about this yeah and get all my get it all out of my system and sometimes it'll be like an EP or five track mixtape or something like that and um, other times it'll be things where I, I'm I try to stay fairly active and kind of exercise the muscle of songwriting yeah and uh, so like once every day or every couple of days, I'll just try to make something. Yeah. And so a lot of times it's like, well, what, I, what am I into? What's interesting to me? And then I just kind of make something and see where that goes. Yeah. So I, it's, there's no strategy. Sure. People think there's a strategy in like a, a chart yeah. or a calendar of things, but it's like, it's really like, oh, I like, I like this show. Let's make a thing about this show. Yeah. It's that simple. So it, no. it's nice. It's pretty free. It's freeing because yeah. I get to do whatever I want to. That's great. And, and what do you use uh, on the road? Because you're saying that you're on the road a lot, so you must write a lot of your stuff uh, <laughs> whilst, you're, whilst you're out. I, it's weird. Like I would, I record scratch versions of songs from uh, my iPhone headphone mic. Wow. Because when great. you plug it in, <laughs> yeah. when you plug it into your MacBook, it works as a mic and yeah. there's like this weird compression on it yeah it's really, it's really good yeah it's quite a yeah. it's quite a bassy sound yeah. as well right and so like I'll, I'll record scratch versions of it and some of the songs i've actually released are actually from that that i just <laughs> kind of like made it really like clean clean sounding. yeah sure and then i get home and once i'm home from the road i just like will just tear through it because i have like a home studio kind of set up great and uh and mastering software and all that stuff so a lot of it's just like when i get home it's just immediately 
because I, I the best part of it for me I really enjoy making songs yeah. and so it's kind of like fun when I've been gone for a while to finally do it absolutely and you released an album in November which is uh, the middle of nowhere yeah. so uh, that was your first album right oh uh, uh, no proper? that was my third full length oh album. third full length but album. it was probably okay, cool. the first one that I had like such a huge amount of publicity for publicity it, so. about yeah exactly yeah. so how do you find the experience of because of course you know you have the, this huge amount of ongoing content that comes out and then releasing an album is a whole other you know uh, kettle of fish I guess yeah. uh, and so how do you find that experience and and just you know uh, how do you see people reacting also to a full full length release I mean I definitely try to make every album be this cohesive product and I mean even if you listen to this album the secret is that like you can leave it on loop Right, and it goes all the way back around to the beginning, and it never stops. Awesome. Um, and it's it's mostly just like working with a lot of producers and just kind of getting a lot of beats where they send you just tons of tons of music. Yeah, and you try to piece together this puzzle and try to like see what you want to touch on over this overarching theme. And so it's a lot longer because like the stuff on the website I can just do and release and just be done with. And the what the yeah. album is the thing that most people who are friends with mine, who criticize me on, are like, you need to spend more time working on things. And so the <laughs> album, I forced myself to keep doing drafts of it and keep rewriting it. And yeah. This album, I definitely spent like a year making um, just to satisfy my friends who just kept on bugging me to, to spend more time doing something. Yeah. Um, and so it was the it was a result of a lot of like hard work, a lot of collaborations with like a different people. There's um, some amazing artists on it. And there's a James Urbaniak, who's the voice of Dr. Venture from the Venture Brothers, does the introduction. Great. So it's 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 a it's a different experience, and it's almost like I get really impatient. So yeah. that by the time the album comes out, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sick of this now. I know. Yeah. It's, uh, I think a lot of artists feel like that, but yeah. it's uh, it's kind of hard to keep the eyes on the ball and think uh, this has just come out. It feels to me, yeah. it feels old, but people, it's just come out. People are just enjoying this now, and I have to not immediately start talking about how much I don't like it because I can notice this one thing that I did on it yeah. that I couldn't fix or something. So yeah, exactly. But it, it's it. It's been received really well. I think people are, are very, you know, they're very enthusiastic about it. And it's nice because I really do feel like it's the best, I do feel like it's the best work. And yeah. I'm not just saying that because it's the latest thing. I do feel like it's the culmination of a lot of stuff. So, so you released that on Bandcamp, right? On Bandcamp, on iTunes, on Amazon, MP3, and then I have physical copies that I print, pressed up myself. And do you, do you feel strongly about remaining independent from, from that point of view? Or? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I, don't, uh, I don't take uh, orders very well. Or authority figures, so, and I also feel like they wouldn't understand what I do. I've actually gotten right. in um, arguments with a lot of music industry people about the fact that I release too much music, too much of it's free, too much of it is ephemeral, and um, too much of my show is actually songs that are not on things that I sell. Yeah, and. I try to tell them that I don't think of myself as making music, I think of myself as making content yeah. for people to enjoy and it just happens to be in the form of music. And what's more important is like kind of the, the discussion that comes up around oh, oh, <laughs> B? that comes up <laughs> around the songs and you get to engage with your audience yeah. and have this personal connection. And so um, uh, I think, uh, I don't know if there are many major labels or, or music industry people that would be like, yeah, you should keep definitely releasing all these songs and not perform a single song from your album at your show. Yeah. I think uh, they would be, in fact, I know people who used to be A&R people yeah. who are friends with me now and they're just like, you would have been a nightmare for me if I was your A&R at a label. <laughs> like, I would have hated you. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. This is how I know how to do it. And it's worked. So yeah. like, I don't I don't really want to fix it if it isn't broken. Sure. Yeah. Talking about Life on the Road, like there's a, quite, quite a few services coming up. There's a, a detour in the UK with a song cake that, oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that are working on uh, finding ways to enable artists to tour in places that where they wouldn't normally be able to or wouldn't know that they have a fan base in so on that front are you excited about the opportunities that could be there for you yeah. for like pockets of fans in different parts of the world that may get together and you know pay for you to go out and play a gig somewhere yeah, around them especially because I'm mostly an online artist yeah. um, there's no centralized kind of location for a lot of people I didn't start in a scene I didn't start in one city and kind of go around yeah and so um, it's it's definitely like been amazing whereas it used to be things that artists had to do themselves where they would be like on Facebook or on yeah. social media being like I need this many people to join this event for me to be able to book a show at this concert and you have to promise you'll be there. There's a lot more things that let, let people follow you and know when you'll be there automatically. Yeah. And so that's incredibly helpful and I think a lot of that has kind of just been embedded like Bandcamp uses Songkick in it yeah. to have the listing of the shows and 
it's it's like there's brownpapertickets.com, which allows you to actually make your own will call list. Yeah. Um, which I've used all of that stuff, and That's it's awesome. it's been amazing. Even something just like Square. Yeah. Which allows us to take credit cards at a show <laughs> is like life saving. Yeah. Completely. So. Absolutely. For um, merchandise and anything. Yeah. We we I think I know some people who are like older indie musicians, and they just look at us like, oh man, you guys have no idea how good you have it, or like how easy it is to print yeah, CDs. Absolutely. They used to have to sit there and like cut it up and paste together <laughs> cases and things like that. And we just, just get someone online, one of a thousand services to do any part of it. And it's very cost effective. Yeah, yeah sure. It's, it's, it's more cost effective than even if we were to do it completely DIY. So yeah, yeah. it's been awesome. I mean, like it's like, I am a, I am a creature of the internet and yeah, I yeah. definitely use it to the fullest extent as possible. So, so in, that, in, that, in that sense you also use analytics uh, uh, to understand where your fans are and yeah. to work out where you need to go so like next big sound or anything like that. Uh, yeah I mean I, you try not to focus too much on it or you try to disassociate yeah. yourself from it because I definitely know a lot of artists who are so obsessed with like how many likes did this get, how many people came to my website today and how many views is this and it's not really about that. Yeah. Uh, you could get something that gets like a hundred thousand views and that won't translate to any new fans whereas something that gets 200 views on a very like enthusiastic like niche of fans will make all 200 of, the, of them fans for life yeah and so you try not to get too bogged down in that and just see like trends so if something like upticks or something like causes something to change you know that that's like a super effective thing that you did sure. or maybe a super non-effective thing that yeah. you did <laughs> ineffective yeah so um i think it's just a matter of seeing the trends and kind of like trying to trying to see where where the needle goes when you do things. Yeah. I think that's the most useful thing for analytics. That's awesome. Well, Adam, it was a real pleasure talking to you today. Yeah, uh, thank thanks you so much. much. Yeah. And uh, again, go and check out uh, adamwarrock.com. Yeah. And also, if you go on iTunes, uh, uh, the there. middle of nowhere, you can find that. You can find also the previous albums, I'm sure, Yeah. Uh, on there. So uh, go and, and check it out. There's a lot of free music on the website, so hun hundreds. People say too much. And your Twitter handle is? Uh, it's E-U-G-E -E Warrock. So E-U-G-E-W-A-R-R-O-C-K. Okay, uh, I'll make sure the links are in the show notes as well of the video and SoundCloud so you can go and check it out. Well, thanks so much, Adam, again. Yeah, and thank thanks you. for listening to the DMT coverage of South by Southwest. You can find out everything on digitalmusictrends.com. Yeah.